Okay, so if you want to have a mannequin with a mirror modifier, or any other figure with a mirror modifier, uh, which I'm going to create very quickly here, it's not going to be fine art, but it will serve as an example. Brilliant. If you're going to be extruding, make sure you either have all the things selected or you're in the right mode. I thought I was in face mode, I was in edge mode. Okay, we can get rid of this. Brilliant. <laughs> make sure you don't have other items on your uh, model selected before you start deleting things. Add our mirror modifier. And we'll also add a subdivision just for fun. Oh, actually, I can just do that with Control 2. Add in some room for some joints. And we're good to go. Looks a little bit like a Slenderman, but that's fine. Oh, and if you find that you're doing anything in a uh, mirrored uh, model and you try to do a scale and it does something weird like that, uh, just make sure you turn on clipping and it'll start to use the center of the model as the origin point um, if you're using median point pivot. Uh, just get rid of this edge loop. Make the neck a little bit more uniform. Not going to be fine art, but I do have some standards. All right. That'll be good for this. Now, we're going to add an armature. And the way that it's constructed, and more specifically, the way that you name the bones is going to be very important. Let me turn my x-ray on here. Just gonna make a basic uh, model here. And I'm only gonna create the first half of it. Disconnect this bone. I said disconnect that bone. There we go. Make a elbow and out to the hand. Do the same thing with the uh, pelvic bone here. Just extrude it out, disconnect it. The particulars on how you create the. Uh... Oh, interesting. How you create your armature doesn't really matter. It's the naming that's really important. <laughs> okay, here we go. So. Now we've got our armature. It's not assigned to anything. We're going to make some groups. Now here's where the important stuff happens. I'm going to call this um, forearm, whoa, not caps, 
dot L. The dot and the L are important, and make sure it's a capital L. Now I'm going to assign these vertices to this group, so that if I deselect it, and I hit select, oh, see that's why I test. Uh, remove. So now if I select this vertex group and hit select, it'll just select those particular items. I'm going to create a new vertex group. I'm going to name it the inverse. So forearm dot r, capital R. And we're not going to assign any vertices to that. I'm going to go right up the line and do that for some of these other items. Create a new vertex group. This will be bicep. Dot L. It doesn't matter what the names are, so long as it ends in the dot L and dot R. And the dot L, in this case, since I'm working on his left side, um, is what groups are going to have vertexes assigned to them, and the dot R is not going to have any. So this is going to be shin dot L. Create an empty shin dot r. Make sure that my l, nothing selected. Okay, so I just need to select those and hit assign. Select, great. Select, blank, great. Uh, I forgot to add in one for bicep for r, so we'll just throw that in. Select, select, great. <laughs> if you hit Control A to deselect everything and you're over here, it will close the group you're looking at. So, that does get annoying sometimes. Uh, where else? We need the thigh. Assign, deselect, thigh dot r, empty, and we'll just do one for the head that will control the neck and the head. We'll just call it head. Now these vertex groups are going to respond to the bone that's named exactly the same way. Uh, but that's only going to happen after you add the modifier for armature. And then we'll select the armature. I didn't name mine. By default, the name is armature. If you named your armature, select the name of the armature that you uh, created. That's only really important if you have more than one armature, because usually you'll just select whatever armature it lets you select. Um, so now let's go into pose mode. By clicking on the armature, I'm going to pose mode. Now these probably won't do anything, because I haven't named any of these bones. So forearm dot L and now we have a moving forearm. Uh, if you haven't done this in the same order, if you first created the bones and created the groups um, without creating the right hand side group, for instance, if forearm dot R didn't exist, when you go back to the bone and start moving things, both sides are going to move. That's how you know you missed a step or you just didn't do it in the same order. Um, the reason forearm.l only moves this and not the right side when both groups exist is specifically because of the option set on the mesh in the mirror modifier, which is right here, vertex groups. Uh, if that wasn't selected, let me re-add my uh, group here. That was forearm dot r. Now I can move just that one, and if I had a corresponding bone over here called forearm dot r instead of forearm dot l, it would just move that side, which I'll show you in a second. But in your modifier for the mesh, if you didn't have um, vertex groups selected, it would still have the same result.
So that is why that works. So what we're going to do, we've done half of our model. Uh, I'm going to rename the rest of these bones real quick. Bicep.l. There's nothing for this, but I would usually call it shoulder.l. Uh, this is thigh.l. And this is thigh.l. I'm sorry, <laughs> shin.l. So now we test these, and these all do what they're supposed to do. Like I said, it's not art, but it definitely works. I'll do one for the head as well. That should have worked. Ah, I bet I didn't assign anything. Yep. Assign. And there you go. Okay, uh, let me add the torso here. Pelvis and chest. And create the corresponding groups. Pelvis gets whatever's not attached to the leg. And chest gets whatever is not assigned to the arm or the neck. Uh, this is the only set of vertices that are attached to the head for the neck, so we'll select everything else. And now our armature should control everything. Except for the left-hand side, or the right-hand side. Uh, the way we do this easily, without having to redo a whole lot of extra work, we're going to hit Control c to center the, the uh, 3D cursor in the uh, middle at 0, 0, 0 on all the axes. We're going to select 3D cursor as the pivot point. We're going to select with uh, B, box select, all of these bones. Duplicate. Oh, we want to be in edit mode for the bones. Just uh, right click to drop them back where they were. Then we're going to hit scale, negative 1, X, and then enter. Now, none of these are going to work yet because the bone names aren't correct. Uh, so, what we're going to do, select all these, flip names. I don't remember exactly where to find this, I just search for name and hit flip names. So what this is going to do, if you look at any one of these bone names, see right now it's forearm.l.001 because it's a duplicate, and all these have the same naming convention. But once we select all of the other side, because they all have the same naming convention, and we flip names, now they all switch to, for, uh, you know, whatever the name was, dot .r instead of dot .l. This is why the dot and the capital L is important, because Blender only recognizes the dot and the capital L variant. I tried to use underscore L, and if you're using that too and it's not working, that's why. Uh, they may have changed it because the wiki used to say that worked. So now since everything is correct and we have the empty um, mesh groups over here for all the R's, it just assumes that the R's are correspondent to the L's on the other side. So these all work now. And there you have it. Oh, I missed. I must have missed a vertices. Or I have an extra... Ah, I never selected his uh, part. <laughs> so that's supposed to be assigned to the pelvis. And to verify that, we would just do a select on all those. That isn't uh, assigned to the leg, so we'll just assign that one versus the select. That's all good. There you have it. See you next time.